In this tutorial we will use deep reinforcement learning to teach a robot how to navigate to a local goal in an unknown environment. That is without using a previously created map. With rapid evolution of reinforcement learning algorithms, it has become possible to learn complex tasks such as navigation. In this tutorial, we will use the TD3 method. As you can see, using this method, the robot successfully reaches the goal even when environment changes with every testing. This tutorial was made based on this repository. Thanks to the authors for sharing this great work. Since this project has initially worked only with ROS1, I modified it to work with ROS2. The code is in the description below. Now let's see the theory. So, what is TD3? TD3 stands for Twin Delayed DDPG. And DDPG stands for Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient. TD3 is a relatively recent method and it is based on previously developed algorithms. So, in order to understand how it works, we should begin from the basics of the policy gradient method. But before describing TD3, we will briefly discuss policy gradient method, deterministic policy gradient method and deep deterministic policy gradient method. In this tutorial I will not explain derivation or proof of formulas and we will go over theory very briefly. For more in-depth explanation please see other materials. Now, let's begin. Here, we consider the case of a stochastic, parameterized policy, pi theta. Policy gradient method estimates weights of an optimal policy through gradient ascent by maximizing expected cumulative reward which an agent gets after taking optimal action in a given state. To actually use this algorithm, we need an expression for the policy gradient which we can numerically compute. After several expression transformations, we can get this formula. This is basic policy gradient. In this form, policy gradient can be estimated by letting the agent act in the environment using the policy, and collecting a set of trajectories. This is the simplest version of the computable expression. In the case of deterministic policies, the policy takes in the state space S and outputs an action space A. Instead of getting the integral over actions, we only need to sum over the state space as action is deterministic. This is an expanded form of the deterministic policy gradient. The proof for this deterministic policy gradient is similar in structure to the proof for the policy gradient theorem. An advantage of the deterministic policy gradient is that compared to the stochastic policy gradient, the deterministic version is simpler and can be computed more efficiently. DDPG is an algorithm which concurrently learns a Q function and a policy. It uses off policy data and the Bellman equation to learn the Q function, and uses the Q function to learn the policy. Now, I will explain some facts behind the two parts of DDPG. Learning a Q function, and learning a policy. Let's begin from the Q learning side of DDPG. In DDPG, we are using mean squared Bellman error function, which tells us roughly how closely Q phi comes to satisfying the Bellman equation. Here, small d indicates whether the next state is terminal. So, the objective of DDPG training is to minimize this mean squared Bellman error loss function. There are several methods used to successfully train the network. The first is replay buffer. This is the set of previous experiences. In order for the algorithm to have stable behavior, the replay buffer should be large enough to contain a wide range of experiences, but if we use too much experience, you may slow down the learning. The second is target network. By using target network we can stabilize the learning. In DDPG style algorithms, 
the target network is updated once per main network update by Polyac averaging. Now, about the policy learning side of DDPG. Policy learning in DDPG is fairly simple. The objective is to learn a deterministic policy by theta which gives the action that maximizes Q phi. The action space is continuous, and we assume the Q function is differentiable with respect to action. So, gradient ascent is used to solve the above equation. Finally, we get to TD3. DDPG can achieve great performance sometimes, but it is very sensitive to hyperparameters and other kinds of tuning. Often, learned Q function begins to dramatically overestimate Q values, which then leads to the policy breaking, because it exploits the errors in the Q function. TD3 overcomes this issue by introducing three critical tricks. The first is clipped double Q learning. TD3 learns two Q functions instead of one, and uses the smaller of the two Q values to form the targets in the Bellman error loss functions. The second is delayed policy updates. TD3 updates the policy and target networks less frequently than the Q function. It is recommended to do one policy update for every two Q function updates. The third is target policy smoothing. TD3 adds noise to the target action, to make it harder for the policy to exploit Q function errors by smoothing out Q along changes in action. Here is a structure of a network we used in this simulation. Robot states consist of distance between robot and goal, angle theta between robot heading direction and goal direction, translational velocity and angular velocity of the robot. It also contains distances to obstacles, each 9 degrees and 180 degree range in front of the robot. As has been described in the previous slide, clip double Q learning trick is used in this network, so there are two identical networks in one critic network. The policy gets reward of 100 if the robot reaches the goal and gets minus 100 reward if collision happens. Also, each time step, the robot gets reward which is the difference between translational velocity and angular velocity. This reward is applied to make the robot move forward as much as possible. Now, let's execute the simulation. Firstly, we have to train our network. To do this, launch the training simulation launch pi script. To observe how training goes, TensorBoard is helpful. Open train Veladyne NodePy script using Visual Studio Code. Launch the TensorBoard by clicking on Launch TensorBoard Session. Select current directory. Note that the graph here is describing the state after the training is complete. Here we can see that it takes about 3700 steps for Q average value to converge. To test training results, launch the test simulation launch pi script. As we can see, the robot successfully navigates to the goal.